Good evening folks and welcome to day 8 of my beer advent calendar. Now, anybody who's been following they say you got a beer advent calendar just like when you were a kid but instead of uh, chocolates you get a beer every day and they're all German beers. And although I have an idea of the beers that are in the box, they're all listed here, I have no idea what I'm going to get any specific day. So it's a bit of a crapshoot. Uh, today we're at day 8 right here. Punch it out. I have no idea what I'm getting, so you'll actually know a little bit before I do. Okay, I made the right there. Put that there. I'll zoom in so you can see the beer. And then I'll have a read. There you go, folks. I'm just going to zoom out and I'll read the beer, get a rough idea of what I'm getting, and then we'll do a little bit of quick research, find out a little bit about the beer. All right. Honored as one of the world's best Weizenbach beers. Now, I know Weizen beers are wheat beers, so it's definitely a type of wheat beer. A Weizenbach, um, if I had to take a guess, I believe. Bach just means a higher strength, so I'm thinking a higher strength wheat beer. And <clears throat> with that being said, on the side of the box, it has Weizenbach Hell. So in on, all honesty, I have no idea. I'm not sure if it's a Weizenbach, is it a Hell? Let's see what they say on the side of the box. The Purple Can, the Leidenberger, which is the name of the brewery, I believe. Weizenbach, 7.4% uh, alcohol, strong beer, and the style of beer they have is a pale wheat bock. Alright, so I have some cue cards here and I don't think they're going to help out here because this one is a real new one for me. So the German beers, I'm just starting to think if they got anything there. They have a Weizenbach. Huh, I'm surprised. So I don't understand what the hell part there is, but Okay, so Weizenbach, let's pour it up first. So it's a wheat beer, so I'm going to get my wheat beer glass. We talked a little bit about that last night, specifically uh, advantages of the proper glass. So feel free to check out the review from last night. Get my glass a quick cold water rinse. Crack it open. It's a pale, they said a pale wheat beer, so it's definitely pale, just from the color alone. Um, not a lot of head, especially for wheat beers. Any wheat beers that I've had in the past, you normally get a fair bit of head. So this is a little bit lighter head than most beers. Uh, it's not clear, it's a little bit cloudy, so it's probably unfiltered. Let's see if we can get any information on the can. Um, Name of the brewery, it's in Germany. Once again, ingredients, water, barley malt, wheat malt, and hops. 7.4% alcohol. And that's about all the information we're going to get from the can. Um, kind of smells like a beer I already previously had, which I think they said banana and cloves. Like I, I said in one of the other videos, I'm not good at picking out specific elements of the beer. For me, I'm your average beer drinker. I either like it or I don't. And being a North American, I mean, I was pretty well raised on lagers. However, I am starting to develop a taste for ales. That's um, different. Um, but the higher alcohol content you initially get the, um, for a split second, you almost, you can almost taste the higher alcohol content. Um, I'm still getting the, the aroma I had. I'm still getting the same flavors, and I could be wrong, I think, cloves and bananas, because I've definitely have uh, tasted before in other wheat beers.
for a split second also I almost get a sour beer taste for like a really split second and then it's gone and there's no strong aftertaste which is good all right we'll see what the cue cards say for a Weizenbach gold to brown uh, bitterness out of five they give it a one they say the alcohol content is elevated to five six point five to nine point zero which we have 7.4 I actually impressed myself because flavors and balance intense banana and clove flavors are typical and that's the first thing I tasted and first thing I smelled and like I said normally I don't have a good nose or a good palate for individual aspects of the beer however I guess I'm starting to develop it which pat on the back for me uh, it says malt flavors ranging from bready to nutty and toasty depending on the color. Uh, for history, it says, in Germany, must conform to the two regulation as a Weizen beer. The grain bill must contain at least 50% malt. And as a Bach beer, the original gravity must be at least 16 degrees Play-Doh. And I believe that has to do with the alcohol content. So I said originally, I said a Weizenbach, I said wheat beer and high alcohol. So I was pretty well right on. So I guess I'm actually starting to uh, learn a bit. Now the app that I mentioned, it's a beer tasting dot app. I have, on the box itself, they actually mentioned it. Basically, it's a pretty neat little um, app. Basically, you take a picture of the can, it checks its database, and gives you a little bit of information. With that being said, I mentioned yesterday, I just wish they would give a little bit more information, not only on the beer and the brewery, but the specific type of beer, or maybe a different section of the app where they talk about different beer styles. And if they're going to do that, maybe another section talk about different beer glasses. Just more for the beer experience. But it is a cool app, I'll give it that. Alright, so I'm going to take a simple picture of the can. Ooh. Let's see if they found us. Alright, so they call it a Weizenbach Hell. I think the Hell basically, if I can remember correctly, the term hells or hells basically means light or something like that. It has to do with the color. So maybe that's why they're saying Weizenbach hell. Alright, so they say pale wheat bock. They say 8% alcohol, so it's actually a little bit. That might be most of these beers. If you go to Germany, you can only get them at the small breweries, whether it's in on tap mostly. You, you normally don't can their bottles, or sorry, their beers, but they do specifically for the advent calendar. So perhaps the one that you get in Germany on tap would be 8% alcohol. Um, it's a top fermented beer, and we talked about that previous to difference between top fermented and bottom fermented. Top fermented basically means it's an ale, not a lager. And beer description. They say a classic top fermented golden yellow strong beer is traditionally fermented in the bottle. And that would be why you're getting a little bit of cloudiness because it does a fermentation in the bottle. And the foamy, the foam fine poured, very stable and creamy. Okay. The foam fine poured, very stable and creamy. And the appearance of strong golden yellow color with ideal Heftenbung, H E F E T R U B U N G. I think heffen is normally yeast, and bung would be what you put on the cask. I'm not sure, sure uh, what that's referring to. They say the smell type appropriate, top fermented, fruity, trace banana lake. The end trunk harmonious, full body, full body, full body, sparkling, rounded, balanced, aromic malt character. The nash trunk, soft, mild, fading, very well in the proportion of malt. Of malt and hops tunes. I guess they're talking about the hops and the malt. A little bit confusing for me. Um, now I gotta give it a rating. Definitely this close them down. And I, as I said, for a split second, I get the taste of like a higher, I can almost taste a higher alcohol, con alcohol content. And then it kind of dissipates. And then it just kind of lingers again. 
Not a bad thing, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's different. Hmm. Uh, my rating, as per usual, it's out of five. I either give a whole number or a half number. No other fractions. A one being, it's a drain pour, don't like it, not going to finish it. A two being, eh, I'm not a big fan, however, I'm not going to waste it, so I'll drink it. A three is a good beer, four is a very good beer, five is the best beer I've ever had. So to give this one a rating, and it's an interesting beer because the the aromas or the sorry, the flavor actually for me is quite intense for you know when you first swallow it. It doesn't last long. And right away the cloves and bananas kind of struck me, which is different. So for me to pick that up, it has to be fairly strong. Once again, not in a bad way. Um, I'm kind of perplexed on what to give it. Um, I think I'm going to give it a 3.0. The flavors that are coming out to me, it's interesting, but it's bananas and cloves, I mean, I don't mind it, but it's not an ideal flavor that I want in my beer. So, yeah, I think 3.0. I was tempted to give it a 3.5. I think 3.0. It's a good beer. I don't mind it. Uh, I've, I've never had a Weizenbach, so I always love having a beer that I've never had before, or beer style I've never had before. Um, as soon as I seen Bach, I knew the higher alcohol, alcohol content, so I was actually expecting a little bit of oomph when you taste with the alcohol, alcohol content. I'm not getting that, however, I definitely can taste the increased alcohol. It kind of hits me for a second, and then it kind of lingers away, and then after taste, I can get it again. So it makes for an interesting beer, to say the least. So there you go, folks. That's my rating for the Ladenberger Weizenbach Hell, which apparently is honored as one of the world's best Weizenbach beers. So if you never had a Weizenbach, by all means, check one out. I was going to say pick one of these up, but my understanding is you can't pick these up unless you're in Germany in a bar. But there you go. Hopefully somebody who's also watching the reviews, if they have the calendar, by all means, comment. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. So there you go, folks. Until the next beer, as always, enjoy responsibly. Cheers.